This is What's Neat for July 2016. I'm your host, Ken Patterson, and this month, John Tyson comes by and shows us some magnificent RC vehicles in HO scale that just drive smooth. Also this month, for tool tips, we talk about crimpers, a vital tool for DCC installation when you're running your loco net around your layout. Also, that we do a photography segment this month featuring new and scale passenger cars from Bachman. We shoot them in a nighttime scene with a full moon, and it really made for an interesting looking photograph. Also, we talk with Craig Bischeyer this month, who is building a beautiful turn of the century layout, and he shares parts of that layout with us for this interview. Also, we look at and listen to the new Tsunami 2 decoder. Now, I've been working on my layout a lot and adding a lot of trees and making the scenery look just right to create some new videos for soundtracks featuring the new Tsunami 2 line of decoders. And this month, we look at the diesel decoder. It is just a magnificent new decoder. I'm telling you, it's a great segment this month. And that's what we've got this month for What's Neat. Oh, you caught me doing some wiring on the layout today. I'm adding these uh, Digitrax uh, modules on the layout that you plug in for your loco net. They call it a loco net, and that's the system that talks to the handheld uh, throttles when they're plugged in so that you can program your decoders online. And they run their system, Digitrax runs their system through a six wire phone cable, which I'm, I'm tethering these and running these around. But the subject of today is not about how to wire these, it's really about the tool tip. Uh, and the tip on a tool that you really need is a crimper. At some point when you're doing DCC and you're working with your your local net or uh, whatever, I don't remember what other manufacturers call that, but a crimping tool is a wonderful tool to have and what this does is it takes the phone connectors that we purchase you can get these online or get these at Radio Shack this is a six connector uh, phone jack and that's what plugs into the face panel when you plug your wires in and as you see I've got one I just mounted right down here underneath the layout and so that's the one that I'm about to wire up and let me show you how this tool works it's a really slick easy to use tool it does two things. It cuts the wire and then it crimps the uh, attaching connector to the end of the wire and splices into all six wires at the same time. So the first thing I want to do is cut my wire off clean and I use a side that says cutter. I'm going to make a nice clean cut on the wire here, just like that. And then I want to use the other side that says stripper and that's right here, and that's going to strip all six wires at the same time when I put it in there. Just pull it straight out, and there's all six of my wires ready to be connected to the system. Now let me show you how this works. You take the clear little six connector, and you put it into the crimp tool. And in this case, it's a six and eight pin crimp tool. So with eight pins, I know other DCC manufacturers use eight pins. The Trax uses a six. Now that the connector is inside of the device, as you can see, now I'm simply going to take the wire and insert the wire into the crimp tool. Just like that. And then I'm going to crimp down tight, squeeze it, and that will attach all six wires to our connector that we can then plug it into the Digitrax faceplate. And in, in my case, because I'm wiring it up underneath the layout right here, I'm going to be plugging it into one of the rear jacks, just like this. And because all my bench work is metal studs, I can run the wires right through the metal studs as I daisy chain these loco net wires all the way around on the layout. And so I'm going to plug this one in right here. And this one is finished and connected to the system. And again, I'm just running right through the uh, 
steel gutters when I do this, or the steel uh, studs is what they are. But that's tool tips. Now, in the event that after you've crimped your tools together, uh, your, your wires together, another thing I like to use are these connectors to connect two lines, to splice two lines together at the same time. And the other device I like to use that you look for, you can find these on eBay, you can find them at the Home Depot, is a splitter. And it's a six wire splitter. So then I can come from one wire and split into two by simply, you know, press and fit parts. It just works. So that's the tool tip. Really look into this, the crimper tool, because you will need one of these at some point when you start wiring your own DCC. So that's this month's tool tips for what's neat. segment of what's neat I've got John Tyson again from Joliet Illinois and this time he's brought us some magnificent RC controlled vehicles that run just as good as anything we've ever seen so I've got Mike buddy here and John and guys why don't you tell us about these magnificent models All right. Go ahead, yeah. this was just kind of a little side project of mine uh, you know I, I'm a model, model railroader mm -hmm. and uh, I got into RC planes for a bit and I decided to try to combine the two and uh, this is kind of what we came up with here. Just, this, this is my latest build. This is an Athern Ford F850, I believe. And uh, this one was built with parts from uh, micromodelbau.de. Yeah. Um, it's a website in German, so you're gonna have to translate it to, to figure out what you're, what, what you're buying here. But this, this is a pretty straightforward build. It's uh, ready to run gearbox. Uh, the axle, the front axle suspension, this is all from a faller car system, and this is all sold on that website. So this is basically kind of a, you know, out of the box, you know, as simple as it can be, you know. And then you've got lights in it yep. and fiber optics for the uh, clearance lights. Is yeah, it's fully lit. Uh, <laughs> if that shows up. Yes, it does from here anyway. Yeah, I think there's maybe 10 LEDs on there total. Boy. Boy, that truck runs really smooth. The parts are available from micromodelbau.de. Now, what parts do you need to make one of these trucks run? Um, well, I'm using their gearbox. It's a, a small seven millimeter cordless motor attached to a to their own gearbox. Uh, they're available in different gear ratios. Don't remember which one I used. Thirty to one, possibly. Um, I'm using their speed controller. Uh, a Deltang receiver, which I believe you get from there as well, and then just a micro servo and a couple of LiPo batteries. I, you know, got a nice big box here, so I got some big batteries in it yeah. to get some longer runtime. You know, these these smaller guys, you know, maybe get 15, 20 minutes out of these, but that thing should run for quite some time. Is it hard to get the roof off of that? You no. Show show the inside of it. Kind of hard to see through all the fiber optics oh, for the for the clearance lights, but that's you got a lot of room to work inside there. Right. I'd like to see this running in the dark and uh, see what the lights look like in the dark. Sure. Wow, that is really cool in the dark. Those lights show up really well. The clearance lights, everything. That is awesome. So what do we have inside of this VW bus here? All right, well, this one was more of a, a custom build as opposed to the Atherin truck. This one's all brass, 
constructed the steering. Uh, the drive is just a motor with a worm and a gear. This isn't. This is something I built. This isn't something you yeah, can you buy. Yeah, you made that. You got to kind of just make this yourself. Out of a two fifty six screw, didn't? Yeah, you? exactly. Although you can buy miniature gears like this on that micro mm -hmm. model mobile website, and uh, just a tiny lipo. Same thing. I'm using the same speed controller as the Athern. Same steering servo and same receiver. Just in a small package. All right. Let's see how this one runs. Okay, boy, these things really run great. Nice parallel parking job, by the way. Thanks. And uh, that's uh, these. The way RC is really advancing, it's just amazing how smooth and it, it's it just blows me away. I don't know what to say. The lights, the headlights, tail lights, you know, backup lights. It's just it's unbelievable. Thank you. Thank you. you no, know, thanks so much for coming down here, making the trip down here to uh, get with us on what's neat this week. I hope to see you back again. Yeah. No. Man. No. Thanks for having me. All I right, will be man. back. Yeah, all right. Cool. See you. Bye. For this photography segment of What's Neat, I'm shooting some N-Scale today. You get a lot of folks that ask me, how come I never do N-Scale on the show? And I don't really get that many projects, but today I've got some pre-production, beautiful Bachman Pennsylvania passenger cards that I'm shooting. And I've set up the old Wathers 2006 cover diorama, and I'm using that because it's got some beautiful code 55 microengineering track on it. It's just a great looking diorama. And let me show you the photograph that I just got today. I was just shooting a photograph that focuses primarily on the passenger cars, and I wanted to put just a little bit of the Pennsylvania GG1 in N scale in the background. Now, my guess is that these passenger cars probably have lights in them, and so what I want, might want to do here is rather than just do my typical standard outdoor photograph with these, I might try an experiment tonight, and that's the whole purpose of this video. I think I'm going to do an indoor shot with these because these cars probably more than likely do have lights in them. I don't know, I haven't put on, on the track yet. Most of the stuff I get is generally pre-production, so there's no instruction books or anything written for the stuff that I shoot, because I'm getting it usually about three months ahead of the time that it makes market. So, to do this shoot today, I think what I'm gonna do is take this inside and do a nighttime shot with it and light these passenger cars up. And if they've got lights in them, this will be a successful video because I think I'm going to put up a moon, a few buildings, light up the buildings, and just do a real quick indoor shot using four or five props and the diorama that I've got set up here. And maybe I can get a really cool lit shot of these cars that focuses just on the cars, but still has just a little drama with maybe a full moon and, and just whatever I can set up on the inside quickly to do a nice shoot. So let's, let's uh, see what happens on this project. Uh, if this works out inside, this could be a very interesting photo shoot. So we've come indoors now to shoot the Bachman N-Scale passenger cars in a nighttime setting using this diorama that I've gotten set up here and I died a thousand deaths thinking about the scene and how it should be set up and in reality when I started putting things together it only took 15 minutes and I started shooting pictures. Now the scene is lit with some LED lights inside the building. All buildings have a small puck light in them. The passenger cars are hooked up to DCC. I'm still using the same diorama that the Wathers 2006 cover was shot on. And I've got the full moon that I painted for the old Blackstone Christmas shot hanging on the wall. And I've got a lamp on the floor. And what I do is I turn this lamp on for 40 seconds during the exposure. And the first picture that I set up and shot, I lit the passenger cars, I had all the room lights off, and I lit the buildings. And I let this be lit for one segment of 10 minutes while the camera was left open. And then during that 10 minutes, I turned on the light to light up the moon for 30 seconds. 
And then I used a flashlight, and I took a flashlight from the end of the room and reflected it just off the edge of the cars, so the cars would have just a little silver reflection on them. And then, let me show you the results I got from this. And then by studying this photograph and looking at this, I could see a couple of problems. First, in the background, the building lights from the building were reflecting on the moon's background. And also, the passenger cars, quite honestly, were too lit. So 10 minutes was way too long. So I set up and I shot a second exposure. And the plan was to try to get it right this time. And so what I did with the scene was I had the exposure down to three minutes where the passenger cars and the buildings were lit. I increased the moon's lighting value with the lamp on the floor to 45 seconds. And the flashlight that I trained on the side of the cars, I, I limited that to literally one or two seconds. It was a very quick pan shot with a flashlight. And now let me show you what I got from that. After doing those corrections, here I can show you what the final photograph looks like. Something just totally different, absolutely stunning looking in a way. And these are the new Bachmann N-Scale Passionate Cars with lights in them. So I think it's a great way to display the product. So that's this photography segment for What's Neat. For this segment of What's Neat, I've got a really special guest with me, Craig Bischgeier. Now, I met Craig uh, about four years ago when I started doing this video show, and we got the idea, the concept even from doing video. And Craig actually taught me how to use Skype. And so this evening, I've got Craig on the computer here. Say hi, Craig. Hi, Craig. There you go. <laughs> and I see a pretty neat looking layout behind you, Craig. Um, I know a lot of the guys know you from the Scotty Mason show. Your name is on an awful lot of different podcasts. Um, yeah, it's true. Uh, I'm also a co-host of the Model Railcast show podcast. So that, uh, is where a lot of people will probably know me from and hear me from. In addition, in addition to hearing my name bandied about quite a bit on Scott Mason's show. So. <laughs> it's just neat when you hear podcasts and you hear the name... Craig Bischgeier, just out of the blue as a segue in between segments, this is Craig. It's very surprising <laughs> to me. Nothing I ever expect. But he's a very amazing modeler when it comes to Civil War era, uh, early turn of the century modeling, which is right up the alley with the new Bachmann 440s that we're eventually going to have on the show and do a feature on that. But Craig, tell us a little bit about your cool stuff that you do. Oh, well, let's see. Uh, basically, uh, what I'm modeling is the year 1892, so a little bit beyond the Civil War. Uh, but uh, I model a railroad called the Housatonic Railroad, which uh, was a precursor to uh, part of the New Haven system. It eventually became the Berkshire Division of the New Haven. And uh, I model it from South Norwalk, Connecticut, uh, up to about uh, past Danbury and uh, a little farther up towards New Milford. Uh, it's a nice railroad that uh, I really enjoy. Uh, it's got a little rail marine interface, so there's a uh, car floats down on the land. Uh, it's a double deck railroad that runs around the basement uh, without a helix. And uh, I don't know, there's not much else to really say about it other than that we have a lot of fun with it. Can you move that laptop around and give us a little view of the room or anything like that? Well, I can try. I'm, um, I, I gotta warn you, it's a little messy right now. I haven't really had a chance to clean up a little bit. I've been doing a lot of work on a few different projects, and I, I tend not to clean up a whole lot while I'm, uh, I'm doing a lot of work. But, uh, yeah, I can probably show you a couple. Let's see. Um, all right. To, this be, right here. to be fair to Craig, I mm. just literally called him on Skype moments ago, and this is yeah. an unrehearsed. We didn't even know we were going to talk about anything, but he's got so much fascinating stuff behind him that I really kind of wanted to get a glimpse into his world, and that's what we're doing right now. Well, Let's see, so right here is a building uh, called the Hoyden Olmsted Cigar Factory. Uh, this is actually built by a friend of mine named David Emery, who is another outstanding modeler. Uh, and there's a couple of other models in the back background, which uh, some of which are ones I've done, some of which are ones that have been done by friends. And a number of uh, freight cars here in the front that are different projects I've worked on over time. Some are kit bashes, some are actually uh, laser cut kits, uh, some of them that I've developed myself. Uh, and look, there's also just some plastic kits here and there. Uh, the building in the back there you can probably see is the uh, South Norwalk Ironworks, uh, which is a project that I worked on with a gentleman named Neil, Neil Henning. And uh, we had a lot of fun with that. We built that about 10 years ago. Uh, moving on here, this is the uh, freight house in South Norwalk. 
which again built by Neil, uh, which uh, was a lot of fun. Uh, that's uh, you know pretty much a nice little view of South Norwalk right there. Uh, let's see if I can flip this around a little bit and show you a little bit of Wilson Point. This is a kind of a neat scene, and I, again, I apologize that it's not that clean. Uh, but this is a the Whale Marine section that I was telling you about a nice. few minutes ago. Yeah, that's beautiful. Uh, Right, so this is where the railroad came down to Long Island Sound and they would load car, onto car floats and ferries in order to bring them home to New York City. Uh, and they were competing very heavily with the New Haven at the time. Uh, so this is this was a very busy area in the area and uh, a lot of fun to operate on. Let me just pan over here a little bit, show you a little bit. I hope this is working out okay. It's kind of hard to keep the camera focused. Uh, there's a, a scratch built roundhouse back there which matches the New Haven prototype. Uh, most of the stuff here actually came from uh, photos and valuation maps of things that we found uh, for the period. Uh, there's a station that's in progress being built right there, uh, which was actually a station that was on the pier at Wilson Point. Uh, let me see if I can move this around. Your boats look amazing. Yeah, thanks. Um, some of them are obviously under construction. Oh, uh, this I is love pretty that. Interesting. That is very interesting because now yeah. you've got a part of the layout where something can just disappear and more freight cars can come back on. That's it's, exactly it's it. That's, perfect. And that's what we use it for is uh, staging. Uh, this is actually a staging yard on the railroad for freight and for passenger. Uh, if I walk around the front here, you can see that the, the ferry here, which is a model of a real car ferry called the Cape Charles. Well, this is a railroad ferry, and you can see there there's actually a couple of uh, passenger cars located in the front there. And we actually run a train called the Long Island and Eastern States Express uh, out of this ferry uh, every morning on the railroad when we do an op session, which is a real train that actually operated uh, on this part of the railroad. It came from Long Island across the Sound to here, and then up this railroad to another railroad called the New York and New England, up to Boston and back again. Uh, so that's actually a pretty key part of the operation in terms of passenger traffic. And there's also cool. there's also here there's a car float that was actually used uh, to run freight back and forth from New York and New Jersey to this point in Connecticut. So this actually part of is a pretty exciting part of the railroad to run when we're actually operating. Craig, your layout looks absolutely amazing. I really appreciate you sharing it with us on what's neat. The limited amount of time that we've got for segments, uh, it seems kind of short, but we saw an awful lot of neat stuff. Well, thanks. I really appreciate that, Ken. That's really kind of you. It was fun, kind of. It was kind of fun showing it to you. Cool, man. Well, thank you very much, Craig. Uh, it's always my pleasure. Thanks. this next segment of What's Neat, we're going to look at the new Tsunami 2 decoder. Now, I'm so excited about this product, I can barely contain myself. The diesel features a new diesel dynamic digital exhaust, and this feature allows the locomotive itself to sense the load. So when it's going upgrade on your layout, you can hear the locomotive working hard on the grade. And then as it coasts and comes back downhill, you can hear the locomotive motor throttle back and start coasting as it goes down the grade. Here are two of the locomotives that I installed the Tsunami 2 decoders in back in May, and I had a head start working with these because I had the privilege to make a corporate video for soundtracks on both the steam and the diesel Tsunami decoder. And we will feature the steam locomotive and its sounds, which are magnificent unto themselves, in the next month's video, in the August What's Neat video. But for this month, I would like to show you the video that I made for soundtracks, the corporate video that illustrates a few of the features of this decoder. Now, in a six minute video, I could not possibly cover all of the new features that are in the decoder, but I highlight just a few. And one of them that I think would be great for Hobby Shop Point of Presentation is to demonstrate the dynamic digital exhaust by simply allowing your train to run and hold it back. And listen to the engines throttle up as they're trying to drag me and my hand through the room. And then as I let go, they throttle back down automatically. 
So it's a magnificent uh, segment of video coming up, a great new product, a whole new era in digital decoders from Soundtracks. So enjoy this video that I made for them. It's about six and a half minutes about the Tsunami 2 diesel decoder. Hi, Ken Patterson with some exciting news from Soundtracks, introducing the new Tsunami 2 line of decoders. Tsunami 2 is a decoder that takes scale railroading to another level, equipped with 40 air horns, selectable bells, air compressors, couplers, and nine prime movers in each decoder. It makes matching your prototype easy. Fully redesigned and digitally remastered by the smart engineers at Soundtracks, these decoders are equipped with up to six lighting outputs, flexible, 28 function support, Hyperdrive 2, and over 50 individual sound effects. Available in many great board formats, it is the perfect solution for any scale from N scale to G scale. One of the many great features and sounds found in Tsunami 2, and one of the most fun and prototypically correct, is our new Soundtracks Dynamic Digital Exhaust, now in the diesel locomotive. Taking into account all of the factors of the locomotive, you will be able to listen as the prime mover increases the RPM schedule and even the decibel level when the engine needs it. The feature accounts for all variables a locomotive will encounter, including grade, acceleration, deceleration, and tonnage. No longer simply increasing RPMs by speed step settings or manually notching the RPMs, this decoder mimics everything that is really happening and it does so with significant increases or decreases in the volume as well. Notice as the engine begins to move, how the engine load increases then backs off as it reaches track speed. Now listen as the engine digs in on this uphill grade. And as the locomotive comes up the hill and onto level track, you can hear it throttle down automatically as the load is decreased on the locomotive. Next notice, as the locomotive and train comes off of level track into a downhill grade, the locomotive throttles back, it eases back, and it starts to coast down the grade, all automatically. And as the train is going downhill, I'll hit F11 to set up the brakes, and you can actually hear the train braking and slowing to a stop. Tsunami 2 has three forms of actual functioning brakes available with different braking rates in all three variations. Just like the prototype, you have access to the locomotive brake known as the independent brake. train brake known as the automatic brakes. And 
finally, when you need more braking effort on your mountain grades, you can load up the dynamic brakes on the engine. Tsunami 2 fun doesn't end in the yard. With the addition of Fireman Ed, fuel and servicing functions, and the ability to charge your train, you can add a new level of automation to your operating experience. With so many new features and sounds focused on real railroading fun, Tsunami 2 truly is a new dimension in digital sound technology from Soundtracks. <laughs>